Hi everyone, I'm John and in this video I would like to talk about the awesome underrated deck building game that is Super Mother Load. If you like deck building games, I highly recommend you to check this one out. As a bit of a background, I've been collecting and playing games for about uh, 3 years now. I mostly like light to medium heavy games. Not so much the heavy games because anything above 2 hours <laughs> kind of makes me sad. That and also it gets nicher the more complex the game is. Anyways, back to Super Mother Load. In summary, you are a leader of an elite crew of a resource harvesting corporation. You found this giant source of minerals that will end the energy crisis on Earth. You are then tasked to do the expedition, while also given the liberty to reinvest the profit you earn back into improvising your crew. Using the cards in your hand, you will be drilling and bombing for resources, basically money, in order to get better, more efficient cards that will also reward you with more points. To drill, you use cards of the same color and count the drill symbols that you use in total. This will net you a drill action in a single orthogonal direction, the size of the total drill symbols you used. Bombing is an alternate action that you can do, but only with red cards though. You use a single red card plus a bomb token to bomb a space matching the shape that is listed on the bottom left of your red card. Gather the materials that you just obtained and invest in one of the crews. If you've invested enough, they will join you. You will keep doing this until you've reached the deepest map, because there are four levels of death. Once you've bombed or drilled the last artifact, the game finishes and the player who has got the most points will win the game. That sounds like a typical deck builder there, John. What's so different about this one? I hear you say. The game doesn't actually follow a lot of conventional deck building rules. I'll emphasize on more on this because it really makes the game feel fresh and more adventurous. So most, if not all, deck building games has a common market, right? This game, however, offers each player their own market. This then allows you to strategize in the long run and takes RNG out of the usual market system. The market looks more like a skill tree to be honest if you ask me, because there are 4 different character cards of 4 different tiers that you can obtain throughout the game. Each character card, along with the different tiers, offers their own unique traits and abilities. I personally love this type of customization in games, where everyone is different and is offered multiple pathways or playstyles. In addition, the set of cards that each player gets access to is unique to their particular player, meaning that their quote-unquote skill trees are individually unique. What's even better is that the game designers didn't overdo this bit. Well, what do I mean by that? Most games have multiple pathways to victory, meaning that there are multiple ways to gain points. The easiest way to ruin this, in my opinion, is to add unique player power that makes either a pathway or playstyle so obviously better than the other ones, giving players the correct way to play the game. Not only that it would reduce their conflict or interaction within the game, it would also take out the sandbox feel of some games. Games guilty of doing this that I could remember are It's a Wonderful World and Architects of the West Kingdom. Luckily, these games tend to have their own non-unique power option anyway, so that's good. Anyway, unlike most deck builders, you don't automatically discard your hand and draw cards at the end of your turn in this game. Instead, you're allowed to only do two actions on your turn. Those actions being Drill, Bomb, or draw two cards. This, along with the individual markets, makes for very fast turns. Compared to other games like Clank or Tyrants of the Underdark, the game has much less downtime. And to make things even more interesting, they also have these achievement cards that you are competing for. There's the silver and gold achievements. Silver ones are the small things that you could do during your turn and get extra points for, while the gold ones reward you for going through specific skill trees. The gold achievements is the same exact concept as the nobles in Splendor. There are other small, not necessarily unique things that I like in the game as well. For example, those artifact tokens, which is the direct equivalent of those treasure tokens that you can get in Clank. So there's still that, ooh, I might get something good feel in this game, you know? There's also an absence of a deck calling system, which makes this game great for beginners, because to me, deck calling is one of the mechanisms that's hard for new players to grasp for some reason. But don't worry, uh, you will also never get to a point where your deck is too fat because the game would have ended by then. And lastly, on top of the lovely aesthetics, every player's individual crews are illustrated differently. There's even animals illustrated in some of these cards, which is just mega adorable. It's possibly the references that they are trying to put um, with respect to the PC game, but I just don't play so I don't really know. To summarize, I highly highly recommend this game to anyone that likes deck building. It is quick to set up and is also a breeze to teach. It is accessible enough for new players and it's still quite strategic and thinky for hardcore gamers to enjoy, which makes it my number one deck building game, closely followed by Quest of El Dorado and Tyrants of the Underdark. Thanks for watching and let me know if you got any questions in the comments. 
Any critics on the video too will be welcome because it's my first time making a video so it's gonna be bad. 